Hey, greetings, everyone. So, um, been a bit busy the last couple of days. Right now, really just trying to go after some Google um, Cloud certifications. Google Cloud certifications are very important. Um, if you really get into the Google Cloud software and you understand how it works, you're going to understand a lot when it comes to optimization. When it comes to all aspects of coding, whether in front end or back end, right here we're dealing with big data, obviously. So really, let's just get into it. Um, one of the things I'm learning is now just we understanding compute engine and just creating VM. And um, just to just to go into the background is that sometimes we have to take advantage of big data, right? And we need the CPUs, we need the RAM, we need the memory, we need the storage in order to calculate um, solutions to a big problem, such as processing video streams, right? And um, let's hold on, like processing video data, there's a lot of data that goes into it and you just can't use your average laptop in order to get that done. Right, so this is why we have VM instances to take that data and calculate solutions to our problems. And what happens is that when you create a VM, is that you're using the full power infrastructure of the Google Cloud Platform in order to run your code, to run your to run your data analysis, your big data analysis on their VM, and to and use those solutions as needed as that video finish running screen. So here, what we're going to use is the example, the use case we're going to use, we're going to use our earthquake data from USGS in order to plot earthquake activity and make a visual diagram of our data. And this video is going to show us how we're going to go about that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a VM instance. So let's head over to console.cloud.google.com and let's go ahead and do so. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to compute engine and VM instances. To create, and now we want to just, we want to, create a VM that we can identify. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head to my table here and I'm just gonna copy and paste the values I already have there. So right, our name, just give it a name you can identify what's going on. The region is usually closest to where you are, where you're located. So you really wanna make these default. You don't wanna change unless the project requires you that you need to make changes. All right, the machine configuration, you don't wanna worry about too much what's going on here a general purpose right there they, they kind of more of like a follow-up values but really the the values the property values you're interested in is your machine type whether um so the default right is n1 standard and for your big data projects you might have to increase this you might have to really get to the metrics of how many cpus and the memory that you need but for this demonstration we're just going to be using not to, we're just going to use in 3.75 gigs. And you might think, well, in modern times, eight gigs to do anything, but we'll be fine. All right, so what we want to go ahead and do is we want to be also able to allow full access. When you're beginning to use the VMs here, you want to allow full access, okay? But we just want to make sure that default access might give us problems. It might give us more permission problems. So first you want to allow full access. And then as you go along, you will see how we could change the scopes out so that you can get specific apps, access to the project for the VM instance is supposed to be doing and how users are supposed to interact with it. And also for a firewall, we don't need any um, internet traffic going to it. We're going to be accessing our VM through SSH. So once we're done with that, we go ahead and create. And this should take a few seconds. Let me pop this button. All right, and now we have our VM ready to go. So what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go and SSH. And we don't have to um, open up Visual, Visual Studio here and try this SSH. 
the option is given to us directly through the console. Right, so now as you can see, just by clicking this button, I've, I have a virtual, I am connected to my VM, I'm connected to the terminal, and now I want to go do is I want to first thing, first thing I want to do, I want to give myself root access so I can install the software needed on this VM, right? And just to let you know, this is a Debian machine. Right. So as you can see here, this is a Debian machine, the Linux family. So right, root access, right? All those lovely things that come with Linux. I want to give yourself um, root access. And now first thing you need to do um, in order to get a project, which our project is located on Git, which is the use case for this video, I wanna go ahead and install Git. So let me go ahead and do like so. And after you install the Git, you wanna be able to clone the project. And after that, we want to head to the exact folder where the project is. And I want to look at the and we want to look at the files in here. Right, so install mission installs all the dependencies, Python dependencies, but we want to worry about Python here in order to get this project going, in order for, for us to realize how Compute Engine is able to ha handle whatever, whatever our requirements are needed through those dependencies, right? We're going to use ingest, right, which basically deletes all the earth, old earthquake data and replaces it with new on earthquake data and then there's transform that py which takes that data right in real life that it's going to be petabytes of data billions of data points and transfers it into a visual data model that we could use in the real world so first let's go ahead and install our missing dependencies all right and now let's go have replace our data with the most up to date data that we have and if you want to go take a look at the ingest that you want to look at the csv that we get as a result right we see most recently that there was a uh, earthquake in in hawaii 10 Tenhala, or how you pronounce it, forgive my pronunciation. And what we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and transform this data into something that we can see visually. Right. So after running these commands, right, what we're going to have is we're going to have a bunch, we are going to have this PNG file. But right now, this thing is on our VM, and we don't have any virtual desktop with this VM. So we need to get it out of the VM and into somewhere we can interact with it. We can, we can visually see whatever is in this file because this is our visual data that we need to look at. Right, so what we're gonna, one of the ways we can do this is we can create, we can use cloud storage in order to get that data off the VM into storage and into a, a place we can easily access these files. Like so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a cloud storage bucket. So we're going to go over to our menu. We're going to head scroll down to storage and we're going to click the browser icon. Right, this doesn't mean a web browser, it's just a storage browser. Instead, as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and do is create a new bucket and now our name. What would we need? So usually what I like to do is just, I like to take the project ID, which is a very unique name and a 
append my VM name for prepend the fonts. And, and that takes care of that. You want multi-region? Just a good option in real time, multi-region and a default storage. You want to keep that standard, not worry. For this project, well, we want to see all the files that transform.py made. So we're just going to make this uniform for now. And let's go ahead and have the storage bucket created. Okay. So what we're going to do now, our storage bucket is ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to use this command, JSU2. Let me see if I highlighted this well. Right. We're going to go ahead and copy all these earth these earthquake files. We're going to copy all of them from our VM into our storage bucket. And this is the storage bucket protocol, GS. Right, just like if you have the HTTP protocol, there's a GS protocol. Right? And what we're going to do is we're going to take this command, we're going to copy it into our terminal. And, um, right, earthquake, you see this is the, this supposed to be a name of the bucket. I have a different name, as you can see, to go and copy and paste like so. Uh, paste the storage bucket name like so, and now uh, it's been copied over. It doesn't update in real time. It'll be nice if it did. That's okay. But now we have our bucket. Now we have our objects, right? And these are files. But when you have files in storage buckets, they're known as an object. That's a nice fun fact to know. So what now I'm going to do, I'm going to just go ahead we want to be able to select all the all our objects here, aka files that were built in the objects. And now you want to give them permissions, right? Permissions, this is very important when dealing with the Google Cloud platform. This is basically how you get things to work in Google Cloud, in Google Cloud, you know. Um, if you don't understand permissions well, you're gonna run into issues. So I wanna just highlight that. I just wanna everyone to pay attention when I go over this. So now I'm gonna add. I'm going to go ahead and add the users, all users, right? And as well, we want to give them is the storage object. Okay, go ahead. We can send a notification email just in case we're in the team, right? But for now, allow public access. Really, you don't want to give out public access. You want more fine-grained controls, but that's okay. Let's head back to our objects, and now we, and now we have access to view view our data. And what we're interested in is the visual data that we transformed. We're going to copy this link. Okay, right, we're going to head there, and now as we can see. This is a visual data representation of the data that we, in, we, first, we first downloaded from our project. We pulled the new data and transformed into this visualization so we can just see where on earth these earthquakes are happening right now. Too bad we don't have a legend to see where the most recent one is, but um, according to the CSV you saw earlier, they were happening in Hawaii. So that's how we could make a use case out of VMs and understand what VMs for compute engines are for, right? As we were dealing with big data, we might have more data involved, right? We might start to have legends, we have to start the amount of people in the area, the amount of devastation costs, uh, financial responsibilities with the earthquakes, and it can get out of hand. And that's where the customization and that's where the details, the options that we did not pay attention to will start coming into use. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, I'm going to be posting a link um, in link out with this video on the read through, that read through this file right here of all the steps that um, it took for me to create a VM and use that VM in a compute engine. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much.